back in lab. So we're going to learn how to do thin layer chromatography. And one of the tools we'll need is very thin capillary tubes and we'll get to make them ourselves. We're going to take these pasture pipettes, the glass pasture pipettes, and stretch them out to be thin and uh, break them up into perfect little capillary tubes to spot our samples on our TLC plates. So the way we'll do that is we'll use a not a Bunsen burner, but Bunsen's big brother, the Fisher burner. And, uh, it, and we'll get the glass very hot and then we'll pull it and stretch it. Uh, let me show you how to do that. First, we'll turn on the Bunsen burner. You gotta turn on the gas line. It has to be in line with the tube. And then I'll get my striker. Striker. Ooh, there we go. And we want a very hot flame. The hottest part of the flame is this part in here where you see the little blue jaggedy flame. If you adjust the airflow, say like here, it can go like that. Now it's not quite as hot. It looks cool, but not as hot. You need it to be very hot, so you need that jaggedy flame. You can like twist this to adjust how much air comes in. And sometimes you just have to move to a different gas line or use a different Fisher burner. Okay, so what we need to do next is I need to put this pipette in the flame and twist it around and get it super hot and then yank and pull it apart. It's, it's kind of dangerous. You could get burns every year when we do it. A couple students get a little burn on their finger, maybe a little white that goes away in about three or four days. But it's worth it. And I, usually, I always tell my students, if they're like afraid of it for whatever reason, that's okay. There'll be someone in the class who's thinking, this is the best thing I've ever done. I love this. It's my calling and they want to like stretch out the glass and make uh, I don't know, like unicorns and, <laughs> and they want to blow glass and make a dolphin and go follow the dead and sell their products. So I wish you guys were here to do it. You'd be excited. A lot of students say this is their favorite part of the year. Um, but oh well, watch me do it. <laughs> I'll put, I have to put my pipette in the flame and that blue jaggedy part of the flame, the real hot part, and then just keep heating it and twisting it. Not, don't let my hands get too close. And then I'll get the pipette to be orangey and it'll start to look it's like a Salvador, Salvador, Salvador Dali picture, you know, with the melting clocks and stuff. And then once I get it nice and melty, I have to step back and pull fast. And look at that. I've got a nice long thin pipette. And this in the middle here is the capillary tube. When I do this, I have to be careful because this outer part is very hot that the part right there is very hot and the part right there is very hot but the middle the middle is not hot the thin middle because it's stretched out it gave it more surface area to cool so what i want to do is just set this down let it cool and uh do some more and once it's cool i'll show you i break it up into manageable pieces that we'll use for tlc I'm gonna pull another capillary tube, but for this one, I'm going to do it with a better camera angle, maybe. So here we go. I'm heating up the pipette in the blue jaggedy flame on the bottom, twisting it a little bit so it's evenly. And now it's bendy, huh? Look at that. Once it's real bendy, then the key to getting a good pull is you gotta pull while it's in the flame, but step back at the same time you get that nice long thin capillary tube. So the middle is cool already, but the outer parts are very hot. See there's my, my tip and there's my other end. So I'll set that down on the counter and let it cool. Okay, so here's the first one that I pulled. It's no longer hot on the edge. It's been a couple minutes and I'm gonna break it up into smaller pieces. So I'm gonna go to a thinner area, maybe like right here. And I just, it, it breaks easily like that. And then I break off another piece of it. About right there, say. And then I'll put it into these Erlenmeyer flasks, just some place to hold it. And I'll get another little bit. Break that off. Now I've got 
two in there and I just continued to go. And then the, the second one I pulled, I think it's cool now too. It's been about a minute. Yeah, it looks good. So I'll break that one up too. I'll break them all up and I'll come back. I have my leftover pieces of capillary tube. This is a little bit thick for my liking, same here. So I, I'm gonna put these, I'm gonna throw these away. Should I throw them in the regular trash, this glass? No, you wanna put that in the glass waste. So I've got the glass waste here. It's not normally up on the counter, but they were waxing the floors. So. And we're, the, the janitors were waxing the floors and that's why we put glass waste in the glass waste container so they don't get cut if it's in a trash can, see a regular trash can, you don't want to put the glass in there. And when they're getting rid of it for us, they can get cut. So here we go, I've got all my, my bits in here. Some of them look like a swan almost. Huh? Okay, so there's my capillary tubes that I'll use to spot my TLC plates. One other thing, um, when you're, after you've broken up your capillary tubes, you want to wipe the counter down because the counter will have little bits of glass from breaking it. So you don't want to leave those for other people to like, you know, maybe they rub their elbow on there or something, but set their arm there. So you can get a dust pan and sweep those into the dust pan. Uh, so the counter is clean for the next, for yourself and the next student at the counter. So I've got my capillary tubes over here and I'm going to prepare everything for a TLC run. So this is my eluent chamber I'm gonna use. Just a beaker, 150 milliliter beaker. And my solvent I'll use is uh, for this one, is methylene chloride. So methylene, I'll label my beaker, methylene chloride. I'll use the uh, pencil on the white label here. It works better than the uh, Sharpie because the Sharpie can wash away with ink. And then I want to put a wick in here. So all I'm going to do is just take a piece of uh, filter paper and tear it in half. So I'll take this piece of filter paper, tear it in half, maybe even more than half, we'll see. And I'll put it inside of the beaker. Yeah, that works pretty good. I like it. So it's in the beaker like that. And the purpose of this is to allow the beaker to have more um, methylene chloride fumes in it during the run. So let me add the methylene chloride now. Um, I'm gonna add to about half a centimeter high, I'll show you. Uh, a better view of this. So I have my methylene chloride here. I'm going to draw some up, push it out, draw some up, push it out so it doesn't splatter all over me. And then I'm going to add the methylene chloride into the beaker and as I add it I want to, I'll wet the filter paper as well. I don't really have to, the, the methylene chloride will climb up the filter paper on its own, but I'll just speed up the process. And I'm just gonna basically coat the bottom of the beaker. It's about half a centimeter. I don't have to measure the volume or anything, I just add to that height. And you'll see why that height is important. And then I put a uh, watch glass on top of it. Let's see, can you see the height of it there? Good, yeah. And then I'll put a watch glass on top, kind of help the fumes stay in there. And now this is ready to go. Um, let me prepare my TLC plate next and I'll explain a little more why I have that wick in there, what's, what its purpose is. Okay, here's my uh, TLC plates. These are the Baker Flex um, silica gel TLC plates with IB2F. I believe that's the uh, fluorescent molecule inside of mixed in with the silica gel. I'll explain that more as we use it. So these are expensive. They're $162 for, a bo $160 for just one box. Um, so we're actually I'm going to show you how to recycle them when you grab them You want to grab them by the outside You don't want to get your fingers on there because the oils on your fingers can be absorbed by the silica and those are organic molecules now Contaminating your TLC plate the TLC plate. It might be hard to see in the video, but it has a matte side That's the side with the silica gel our stationary phase and a shiny side see that shiny Yeah, you can tell the shiny the shiny is just plastic so you could touch the plastic That's um, the side that we're not going to put our sample on we're going to put our sample on the side with the silica gel and the way I get it ready is I just draw a line about a centimeter up and you'll notice I'm saying about a centimeter where and that's that's higher up than I made the solvent in the eluent chamber because when I put my TLC plate in here I want to make sure the spots which I'll put like one spot here two three four five I want these spots, when I spot my sample here, I want the eluent to initially be lower than them, and then 
I'll have the solvent, the solvent will travel up by capillary action and pull the spots up. If, uh, say, I put my spots really low on the TLC plate, then when I put it in the chamber, it would be immediately under solvent and it would just kind of make a bigger and bigger circle here. It wouldn't travel up as much because it's, it's already under. Okay, so let's spot this thing. Well, let's actually label it first. I like to put the labels right on it so it makes sense. So um, here's some things about this. So we have our silica. That's our stationary phase, right? That is polar. It's an oxygen silicon matrix, S -I, like this. Silicons have four oxygens. And then you got another silica oxygen. And then so you have this matrix and on the inside, it's just silicon and oxygen. But on the surface, you have these OHs. And that is the surface that our uh, molecules will be interacting with. So is silica polar or nonpolar? The silica is polar. So we have a polar stationary phase. The molecules we're gonna put in here, we have three of them. I'm gonna, in this first run, I'm gonna use fluorine. I know it doesn't have the atom fluorine on it, but that's the name of it because it fluoresces. So this is fluorine. I'm going to abbreviate it ene, E-N-E, -E, fluorine. And then there's fluorinone. It's the ketone version, fluorinone. And then there's going to be, so I'll call that one own, fluorinone. And then the last one is the fluorinol, the alcohol. So. Of the three of these, which is least polar? Hopefully you're guessing the fluorine's least polar. It's all hydrocarbon. And then it might not be as obvious, but which one's most polar? The most polar one is the fluorine all. So of these three, who's gonna stick to the polar silica the most? I expect fluorine all will. They can hydrogen bond like that. So I think the fluorine all will stick the most to the silica, fluorinone second most, and then fluorine the least. So let's see how that will work out. First, let's label these. Let's call this spot the uh, fluorine. So I'll put E and E here. And then I'm gonna name the next one. Put the own here, fluorinone, the ketone. Okay, I have the ene and the own. I didn't have the all alone. I have the ene and ene mixed with the all. Oh well. I have a mixture spot. I couldn't find the all by itself, but it's okay. If I spot the mixture on here, it'll just be two spots and I'll know which one's the ene because I have the ene here. And then I'm gonna do an unknown. I'm gonna do an unknown uh, light and an unknown heavy. I'll explain what that means. Meaning I'll, I'll spot the unknown a little lighter, like maybe one spot and then the unknown heavy, I'll spot it, spot it a few times. And then I'm also gonna put my initials on this. M F S, the date. Today is, today is the 16th, 1621. And my eluent will be methylene chloride, so I'll put that there too. Okay, got it all labeled. Now it's time to spot my samples and to prepare my samples. So I'll prepare the fluorinone first. It's also called 9-fluorinone. So there's my fluorinone. And this 9-fluorinone is 98 plus percent pure. So it's at least 98% pure. It could have 2% impurities. It might be more like 1% impurities because the plus, you know. Okay, so I've got a vial that I've already got labeled as fluorinone, this vial. And uh, this is, uh, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dissolve a little bit of this fluorinone solid in acetone. So, you don't need a lot of it, just a pinch. Whoops. <laughs> and then, so I got a little bit of fluorinone. That's more than enough there. Nice yellow color, huh? So I got my fluorinone in there. 
And then I just need a little acetone. So I'll just shoot a little bit of acetone into here. This is my acetone. See if it dissolves. Yep, it dissolved right away. That looks good. So my fluorinone sample is ready. Now for my uh, fluor fluorine sample. We've got some fluorine here. 98% pure as well. So let me grab my fluorine vial. There it is, fluorine. The fluorine is not a yellow solid this time. It's a white solid, as you can see. Okay. And then I just shoot some acetone in there and that one's ready to go. Is it dissolving? Yeah, it's all dissolved. Looks good. Next up, uh, I'll have, I have to do the mixture because I couldn't find fluorinol alone. Let me cap these guys too. I was being bad about that. Uh, the mixture I have, it's in this, this solid leftover from a, the, the, another part of the experience. So it's fluorine and fluorine. And so you can see the solid on the bottom. So I'm gonna put some acetone into this to re-dissolve that mixture of solid there. Let's see how it goes. Solving pretty good. I think I need some, some more. It hasn't all dissolved yet, but that's fine. I, I have plenty in there. Now let's start spotting our sample. So as I said before, we need a very small amount of solid spotted. We need very small spots. TLC is a great technique in, in that it, it's easy to, to do, inexpensive, and it uh, requires very little of your sample. Because you're usually, you're generally not recovering your sample. You could actually do preparative TLC too, but Generally we're not. So I'm gonna take my very thin capillary tube that I stretched out of a pipette earlier, and I'm gonna start spotting. Okay, so I'll spot the fluorine first there. So I gotta grab my vial, make sure I grab the fluorine I did. Uncap it. And then when I stick my capillary tube into it, do you see my capillary tube? It'll, it'll draw up solution by capillary action. Let's see if you can tell. You see, um, maybe my hand's a better backing for this. I don't know if you can see it, but that's okay. I'll show you what I do. What I do is I tap a little bit out onto the paper towel I have here. When I tap on it, see that how it made that wet spot? So what I, I'm draining most of my solution out of the capillary tube. And if I do that, then when I go to spot on the TLC plate, it'll be a nice small spot. I want it to be small so it doesn't run into the other one. So here we go. One, two, three. Did you see it? There was a tiny little spot that evaporated right away. So what happened is when I spotted, I put acetone and fluorine on the TLC plate. And the acetone evaporated. It's in. It's gone. It's in the room. So all that's left on that plate now is a, a little bit of fluorine that we're going to run the TLC in. So the, the acetone is just a vehicle for this. And then I like to have a little waste beaker and I take my capillary tube that I just used and I break off the end of it, the little bit that had the fluorine solution and I just toss it in the waste container. So there's my waste beaker. And now the end of my capillary tube is clean and ready for the next sample, which is the fluorinone. So let me get that one. This one, I think you'll be able to see better maybe because it's yellow. It, oh, you'll be able to see it drop rise up the capillary tube better for sure. Okay, here we go. So I stick it in the solution and right away it's drawn up into the capillary tube. Whoa. Do you see how it's yellow? And now I, if I spot right now on the TLC plate, it'll make a big spot because I have so much volume in this capillary tube. So to make my spot small, I'm going to initially drain out a lot of it, most of it. So it's just a little bit on the end. And then when I go to spot it, it should work good. So I'm going on to the fluorinone spot and I'll just go lightly touch it. One, two, 
three, no, nope, it didn't work. One, two, one, two, three. Sometimes your uh, capillary tube doesn't break cleanly. Yeah, this one's not working. So this happens sometimes. I didn't have a clean break on my capillary tube, so let me actually, I'm gonna re-break it, because it'll probably, you just kind of re-break it and hope it works better. What happened, I believe, is this. So on the end of my capillary tube, it would probably look something like this. So it broke in a way that wasn't straight across. I want it to break like this, so it's when it hits the TLC plate, it can drain out. But if it hits the TLC plate and the liquid is up here and just that glass is touching it, it doesn't drain. So that's okay. I'm glad it happened so you see it. Um, now I'll re, I broke off the tip of my capillary tube. So now it's hopefully a better break. So now I'll put it back in my solution. Got my lower known here. And then I'll drain it out on the, on the paper towel, most of it. Okay, now I just have a little bit inside of my capillary tube and I bet it'll spot this time. Okay, one, two, three. Did you see the spot? <laughs> I, I had to watch the TLC plate. I don't know what it looks like on video. Let's assume it worked. Uh, and then I'm gonna take my, cap, my capillary tube, break the tip off again. Break off this little bit, put it in my waist. And then I move on to my next sample, the combo one. This is the fluorine fluorinol mixture. That one. Take the cap off, get the capillary tube, and stick my in, my capillary tube in there. I drew some up by capillary action, like how trees absorb water up their roots. Okay, so first again, drain a bunch off onto the paper towel. Now I just have a little bit there, and I'm going to spot it right on the fluorine, fluorinol spot, one, two, three. I think I did a little bit, did I? Ah, oh, it might not be working, I can't tell. One, two, two. Oh, I think I got some. I'm gonna do one more just in case. Yeah, I, I think I got it. Okay, then I break the tip off, throw it away. All right, now I have my unknown spot. All right, I made up my unknown. And my capillary tube I've been using, it got a little bit short. It's gonna be hard to reach into here. So I'm gonna set that one aside and I'll just grab a new longer one. So I've got a nice, remember I had a number of them I, I made. So I'm gonna use this one. And I will stick it into my unknown. Draw up some solution. Drain most of it on the paper towel. Okay, and then I'm going to do a heavy and a light spot. I'll show you what I mean by that. So the, what I'll do is I'll spot once on the light spot. One, two, three, go, there it is. And then once on the heavy, one, two, three, go. And now the light spot, it evaporated all the acetone and I think it's got enough on there. But the heavy spot evaporated the acetone as well. But I'm gonna spot again right on top of that first one to let it evaporate one a little bit. And once it's gone, then I spot again. So the heavy one has three spots in my sample. I do this just in case uh, it's a dilute sample or you might find like an impurity you hadn't seen before, you see one is heavier. But we are ready to go now. So let's stick this in our chamber. Oh wait, actually before we stick it in the chamber, let's, let's check to make sure we have spotted enough of the samples on here. This is our TLC um, box to view the TLCs with ultraviolet light. So this has a, a lamp here, it has two light bulbs in it, and it's just in a hole inside of a box, so it's like dark in there when you put your sample inside of it, and you can look through here at it. Um, so what I got here is ultraviolet um, light, short, a long wavelengths, it's like, it's 350, 65 nanometers, and then I have the short wavelength, 254 nanometers, higher energy. The short wavelength's the one that usually shows up the best, but I like to check them both because some molecules will look different under long wavelength. So the way you turn it on is you just press and hold on for a second, and it should be on, let me see. Yep, it's on. And then I will take my, my uh, TLC plate, stick it inside the box, and look at it through here. Let me see if it looks good for you guys. Can you see it? I mean, I think I have to make it darker. There it is, okay, see? And if we zoom in, you can see that um, 
we are seeing a spot for the fluorine, fluorinone, fluorine and fluorinol mix, and the unknowns. Looks good. So now I know I have my samples on there and I can run them. Um, how does this work? The, way, the reason why we're seeing these right now is because the silica gel has a, a pigment in there that when the ultraviolet light hits, it makes it fluoresce all colors of the rainbow. So our silica, our TLC plate is fluorescing every color of the rainbow. Our organic molecules we spotted on there, they're absorbing some of those colors of the rainbow and only letting others through. That's why we see those purple spots. So this is a, the UV lamp is a great way to visualize TLCs with organic molecules with conjugation because the conjugated pi bonding there, it, it's right now what's happening is you're getting an excitement of a homo electron to a lumo, homo lumo transition, like we've learned about molecular orbital theory, right? So that's why we see those spots there. And this is the short wavelength, the 254 nanometer. Let's look at the long wavelength. I'll just turn that on now, see how it looks. So that one's not as useful for us, huh? I'll go back short wavelength for these molecules, yeah. Now I'm going to carefully place my TLC plate in the eluent chamber. I'll take the watch glass top off initially, grab onto it with tweezers, and I will set it in here in a way where it leans against the glass beaker um, and doesn't touch the filter paper, the wick. So let me set it in there. And watch when I set it in, the spots should be above the solution they are yeah let's see oh sorry wrong good camera angle see how the the solvent is is below the line where i spotted so that's good and now i'll put the cap back on and i'll let that um, methylene chloride climb up the tlc plate by capillary action and as it does it separates out the molecules because we know that the fluorinol the most polar one is going to stick the most to the polar stationary phase. Fluorinone will stick the second most and fluorine will stick the least so we'll separate them out and then after we've run them we'll put them back in our UV lamp box and uh, see what's going on with them. So the methylene chloride has been rising it's been about a minute yeah you can see it there it's already risen past the starting line and the now let me explain what the wick is about so that filter paper wick on this side of there, that's not actually necessary. You don't have to have it, but it speeds up things for you. So the way it happens, the way it speeds things up is as the methylene chloride is climbing up the TLC plate, it's also evaporating away from the TLC plate. And as it evaporates away from the TLC plate, it slows the climbing of the sample of the solvent eluent up the TLC plate. If I have that wick in there, it wicks TLC, it wicks methylene chloride from the bottom of the beaker and it constantly evaporates away from the filter paper. And what this does is it creates a greater vapor pressure of methylene chloride in here. So there's less evaporation from the TLC plate because there's just like a greater, it's like more humid in methylene chloride. And this cap, the watch glass also helps with that. It keeps, traps more of the uh, methylene chloride vapor. So when you put that wick in there, your TLC plates run faster. If you didn't have a wick, it would still work. It would just take a little longer to run. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna pull it out when it gets to about that, where it says methylene chloride on the top of the TLC plate. I think that would be a good distance for the molecules to separate well. If I pull it out now, the molecules might not have had enough time to separate out yet. I've waited about three minutes and it's it's traveled up pretty far. It's, a, it's about at the methylene chloride label there. It's looking good to me. I'm gonna pull it out. When you pull it out, you want to immediately mark the solvent front because it starts evaporating right away. So let me show you how I do that. I will take the TLC plate out with a pair of tweezers and then quickly mark the solvent front. So that's my solvent front. Oh, man, I didn't show it to you. But because if I don't mark it right away, it evaporates and I don't know where it is. So, and it's already evaporating, you can probably see and if you shake it, it'll evaporate a little bit quicker so you can shake, 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 shake it like a Polaroid picture. Shake, shake. There we go. Looking good. Methylene chloride has a boiling point of 40 degrees Celsius, so it evaporates very quickly. So I think it's pretty much done. And uh, now, the moment of truth, I can put it inside of the UV lamp box and see where my spots are. So let me set it inside of there. Turn it on. I'm going to do long wavelength again. The 
254, I mean short wavelength, 254 nanometers. Press and hold for a sec. And let's look. Oh yeah, look at that, looking good. So, let's see if I can get a good view on this. So, well, it's hard for you to see right now. It's kind of far, well maybe if I zoom in. Yeah, actually, you can probably see pretty good. So you can see the fluorine, it traveled the furthest. The fluorine's the lowest spot. It traveled the fur furthest like we thought. It was the, it's the hydrocarbon, the least polar. And then the fluorine, what's the next one there? Fluorine, fluorinone, it's next. Fluorine, fluorinol. Oh shoot, that's not fluorine, fluorinol, is it? That's fluorine, flu fluorinone. Ha, I had the wrong thing. The label says it too. Shoot, so I don't have fluorinol. <laughs> if I had fluorinol, it would be lower. Uh, it's always something with me, huh? So, yeah, anyways. And then our unknown, it looks like we know what our unknown is, huh? The unknown looks to be fluorine, it matches up. So what I wanna do at this point is I wanna take a pencil and circle my spots while they're in the UV light lamp box. So I'd bring a pencil in and I'd circle them and then I could bring them out. Um, I, I, I need to answer that. <laughs> okay, I circled my spots so you can see fluorine the molecule that's least polar, fluorine. It traveled the highest because it was not as attracted to the polar silica. And the fluorinone traveled up less and they were separated. The fluorinone, it's got, it looks like it's got some sort of impurity or something. There's a little extra spot there, but this big one I believe is the fluorinone. And the fluorinone is more polar. Uh, the fluorinol, we don't have any. My bad. I thought I had it. I just misread the label. The, it even says on the bottle. It says, it's so silly. It says this is fluorine, fluorinone. So I don't have fluorinol. That's all right. Um, now, what is my unknown? So my unknown, I spotted light and heavy. They actually turned out looking about the same. So the light one and the heavy one line up. And what do they line up with? They line up with the fluorine. So my unknown is fluorine. So you can see how you can use TLC to to figure out which molecule you have, assuming you have the known one already. Well, it's not a definite that that's the right molecule, but it's strong evidence because they have the same RF. Since these TLC plates are pretty expensive, I'm gonna recycle them. I'll show you how you can do that. You can use them a few times if you recycle them. Um, so the way I do that is I prepare an eluent chamber for that recycling. I just, uh, I'm gonna use, a, you wanna use a polar uh, solvent with a great I forget the solvating property, so I'm going to use acetone. So acetone, it's, it's pretty polar for an organic solvent. And uh, I will add a, a wick again, and then I'll just start squirting in some acetone. And I just want to get the bottom barely coated so that when I stick it in there, much uh, but my spots have already risen up so it's not that big a deal so then um, I take my TLC plate and I will set it in in a way that they're not touching the it's not touching the wick and then I'll cap this and I'll just let it sit aside I'll let that solvent run all the way to the top of this TLC plate and if it runs to the top of the TLC plate for a long time it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna, what's gonna happen is all the spots that I circled, those organic molecules are gonna move up to the top of the plate, and then I could spot new samples down at the bottom and reuse it. Here's my recycling uh, TLC plate in acetone. So you might, you might be able to see, it's almost to the top. I think it just reached the top, the acetone. So I'll pull it out, and I'm gonna look at it under the UV light to see what happened. So here it is, it's coming out. It's wet with acetone currently, but acetone evaporates pretty quickly, about as quickly as methylene chloride. So I could shake it, shake it like a Polaroid picture. Here we go. So I think that's pretty good, and I'll put it back in my UV box and show you what's going on. So I'm gonna use the short wavelength again, the 254 nanometers, press and hold. Okay, so see what happened there? 
my spots that I had circled, this, those they are now no longer have organic compound. All my organic compound is raised to the top up above so I can spot new samples down below. What I'll do is I'll circle where the, the organic spots are currently and so I know I don't want to mess with that and let me show you outside of the box. So this is where all my spots went to. The acetone has a it's very polar and it pushed it pushed the spots from here all the way up to here. They're all on top of each other right there. So I know they're there and so I'll just kind of like mark this off knowing that's like the dirty end and then um, Oh, you know what, before I erase, I'm gonna recycle this, I'm gonna erase everything. But I almost forgot, I need to measure my my spots and my solvent front for the RF values. So let me get a ruler for that. Oh, I got one right here. There we go, so. Silly me, almost forgot. So the solvent front looks to be at about five centimeters. Let me uh, put it down. Call this 4.9 centimeters. So the solvent front. Four point nine centimeters. I'll write this in my notebook as well. And then I'm gonna measure the fluorinone in the middle of the dot. That's where I'll, I'll measure it. So from the starting. So the way I recycle it is I just lightly erase the pencil markings. It seems kind of crude, but it, it actually works well. Yep. This eraser is like an okay eraser. Some, I think those white erasers, if like a lot of times mechanical pencils have those red, red, white erasers, they work a little better. This will still work. Because if there's a little residual pencil on there, it doesn't matter. And then down at the bottom, I'll erase the uh, markings there too. So I can relabel it with new samples. And actually, I'll go ahead and use this plate for the next one. I'll recycle it. Looks good. You can't do this too often because I think when I erase with the pencil eraser, it starts to remove some silica. But uh, we'll check the proof of, perp of whether it works or not. I'll run my next sample this way.